let's keep going with our second uh, <clears throat> handout video. If you're in one of the classes, this will be for slides 13 through 28. It says the difference between deferred revenue and accrued revenue is that, and then we have four choices here. Okay, so um, we need to understand something here that will really help us out an awful lot. This term here, this term deferred revenue, tried to underline it, almost scratched through it, but this term deferred revenue is equal to the term unearned revenue. In fact, in it's not uncommon to see the term deferred revenue on an actual balance sheet. Okay, historically, deferred revenue has been used for governmental uh, nonprofit entities, and then unearned revenue has been you know more for private businesses. Uh, but these are the same thing. So the difference between unearned revenue and accrued revenue, we say we call it deferred revenue here is because we want you to understand the difference between a deferral and an accrual. Okay, so the difference is, and it says choice A, accrued revenue has been recorded and needs adjusting, and deferred revenue has never been recorded. Well, this is this is the opposite of the truth. Accrued revenue has never been recorded. If you recall in our example that we had um, from a previous video, uh, it was Net Solutions was the name of the company. At the end of the at, at the end of the period, they figured out that okay, we've for this particular client, we have earned 25 hours of fees uh, for services provided. And they so once they figured that out at the end of the month when they did their billing. They went ahead and billed that client and they set up an accounts receivable at that time. So the truth is, is that accrued revenue has never been recorded. Um, and then when it is, it's no longer accrued revenue. It's, it's book revenue at that point. Let's see here. And then it says, and deferred revenue has been recorded and needs adjusting. This is a true statement because this deferred revenue has been recorded as a liability. Remember, unearned revenue is a liability. So it's initially recorded as a liability, and then when it is earned, we're going to adjust it to become regular revenue. Okay, so with that said, choice B is the correct answer. Let's look at this little matching exercise. It says classify the following items as number one, prepaid expense, two, unearned revenue, three, accrued expense, or four, accrued revenue. A, so we're going to have an answer for each one of these. Uh, fees received but not yet earned. Okay, so fees received that are not earned sounds a lot like unearned revenue to me. And it is. So we're going to put the little number two out there for unearned revenue. B, fees earned but not yet received. We could even put here, I'm going to do this for you, or build. Okay? Or build. Well, if we go back up to the previous question, we should be able to find out that this is an example of accrued revenue. has never been recorded. If it's never been recorded, um, that's, the, that's the first thing. If it's never been received, then we, have, we would have no reason to record it. Therefore, it would be called accrued revenue. That's our, our choice number four. The way that they worded this could have been a little bit better, but if you had to, you could probably use process of elimination and get this question right, I think. C, paid premium for a one-year insurance policy. We're prepaying an asset here. What did we say a prepaid asset was on the balance sheet? Because we're probably going to put them all together. If we have prepaid insurance and prepaid rent and all of this, 
we're going to call that one thing on the balance sheet and we're just going to combine those numbers. It's a prepaid expense. Insurance costs, rent costs, all of these things are expenses. When we prepay them, however, we actually have a future benefit and that we're, you know, we've already paid for them and we're receiving the benefit uh, as the time passes. So choice C is an example of a prepaid expense, specifically prepaid insurance. And then as time passes, each month passes, we expense that out to insurance expense. Okay, so let's see here. Choice C, put a number one there. Okay. D, property tax owed to be paid beginning of next year. Okay, so property taxes are paid uh, every year without fail. Um, expenses are of a recurring nature. We know that we're going to have property tax. We may not know the exact amount uh, until it is assessed for the upcoming year. This is an example of an accrued expense. Okay, We know we're going to have it. It's going to be a liability. So we're going to uh, accrue that expense uh, as we become aware of it. So for D, let's put the number three out here. And there we go. Yeah, if I can get this paper to be still, I do apologize. I actually have to read quite a ways to get to the paper and my arms are not that long. Okay, if the adjustment for uh, accrued salaries at the end of the period is inadvertently omitted, both liabilities and stockholders' equity will be understated for the period. And then that's a true or false statement. So we need to understand what the um, journal entry would be for this so let's see accrued salaries so we would have our journal entry that we need to make here would be a debit to salary expense or we'll just say five thousand dollars and salaries payable is the liability for that same five thousand dollars but we're saying that we're omitting this journal entry okay this is an adjusting journal entry so let's look at our our statement liabilities are understated we never recorded this liability so that is a true statement so i'm going to put a little check mark right there however it says stockholders equity is understated this is a false statement this is not correct now i want to tell you why it is a false statement because because we need to understand how this works if our revenues are correctly stated and our expenses are understated then net income at the bottom of the income statement is going to be overstated okay it's going to be too much net income flows into retained earnings retained earnings where do we find that stockholders section. so if net income is overstated stockholders equity will be overstated but the question says understated so the first part is correct with regard to liabilities but not the second part so this is a false statement okay all right an example of deferred revenue is unearned rent that is absolutely the truth because unearned rent is an unearned revenue and i already told you back up here that deferred revenue and unearned revenue are the same thing so that is a true statement all right this video is about 10 minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and stop it at this point, and then we're going to do the rest of the uh, handout in a new video. All right?